All right. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm very excited uh, to be here with all of you and, and to support this awesome local uh, running store, the San Francisco Running Company. I uh, own my own company, Coaching Endurance Athletes, and I started just coaching some triathletes in the Bay Area, some runners in the Bay Area now. Uh, I'm fortunate to uh, coach some people all over the country and, and even in a few different countries. So it's a lot of fun for me to interact with people all over. Um, I have one foot firmly planted in the endurance world. I'll tell you a little bit about that. But I also have one uh, foot firmly planted in the strength and conditioning world and the CrossFit world. And I think that gives me a unique perspective because I'm able to see what other people are doing athletically. And uh, we all have our own little boxes, our own little sports and cultures on the way we think about and how we train and how we approach movement in our sport. And we've come up with things that work really, really well. But what I found is that there are athletes that are working in another corner, in another area, and they're developing, they're innovating, and they're coming up with some pretty cool things too. What if we got all these people together? What would we learn, right? So that's some of the things that I get to do. Um, a lot of us here uh, are runners and are very good runners. Um, how many here have run a 5K or a 10K? A lot of us, pretty much the whole room raises their hand. How many of us here have run a marathon? Very cool. Oh my God, a lot of <laughs> everyone here has run a marathon. Um, what about an ultra? All right, once again, about three quarters of the room has done it. Okay, so how many here have run an ultra by accident? <laughs> okay, oh wow, I got a few hands in the back. That's great. Um, so I uh, had run some marathons. I was on the East Coast. I grew up in Boston, and the Boston Marathon was one of the first races I got to do. It was such a special thing. I was very excited. I was studying abroad the next year, and I got to race in Europe, and I found some races, and I got to tour around and marathon train in the Alps in Switzerland and do all these crazy fun things. And the next semester, I was in South Africa, and I was very excited, and I was going to go run down there and do all these crazy things down there. And uh, I found this marathon I wanted to do. It's called the Two Oceans Marathon. I was very excited. Some of you guys are laughing because you already know where this is going. A 20-year-old kid did not know where this was going. So I sign up this race. I get into it. And I print it out. And I look at it. And I'm like, wait a minute. This says 56 kilometers. And for those of you who are also unfamiliar with the metric system, <laughs> that's about 10 miles further than a normal marathon. So I was like, oh, crap. But I was thinking, it's like, you know what? I've done a couple marathons, it's only 10 miles further, let's give it a go. So I started training and, and I went for it. And what it originally attracted me to running was just this sense of going out there. And, and I really think uh, it has a lot to do with why we're all here. You know, and it's like, why are we all here? Why are we in this store right now? Why did Ultra put this thing on? You know, and this, this idea that not only are they trying to, you know, educate us on what they're doing with their running shoes, some very cool things, but they're trying to get everyone in the running community excited, right? And especially with this store, because there's a million running stores in California. They're all over the place. Why this one? Well, it has a lot to do with the owners of this place. I don't know if you follow them on Instagram. I do. <laughs> Every Wednesday morning, I wake up and I look at their photos climbing up Mount Tam, and they're always beautiful running through the clouds, these beautiful sunrise photos, and there's a sense of adventure. And I get excited. I don't run that much anymore, but I'm like, man, I want to do that. <laughs> I get my butt kicked next week, but I want to go out there and join them because it's such a cool thing. And the reason why we're here, right, is because we want to do cool things. Now, I'm here to talk a little bit about running mechanics, but let's be honest, running mechanics is kind of boring. <laughs> right? I would talk to some people. How many of us here, when we woke up, thought about how much we were pronating in our foot <laughs> or our elbow? Maybe one or two, but I'll get to that later. There's usually a reason. Normally, we don't want to think about those things, but we want to run up Mount Ham. Right? We want to go up there every Wednesday. We want to run Western States. We want to run the Boston Marathon. We want to do all these things, and we're always excited to go do those things. Now, as a coach, I get to help people on these adventures. I get to help people do these things, and, and it's uh, problem solving. It always is. And sometimes the problems are easy. They're like, hey, I've run a half marathon. I want to run a marathon. What do I do? We're like, well, OK. We need to up your training a little bit. We need to tweak things here and there. We'll get you there. Hey, I'm really, really good on uh, cooler days around Marin, but every time I go in the heat, I die. What do I do? Well, we can figure out this. We can figure out this. As a coach, I don't need to be the expert in everything. I can resource out to other people. I could go talk to Sonny Blend for nutrition. 
I could go look at the latest things that the San Francisco Running Company has in terms of hydration packs where all these companies and products and coaches around are all trying to solve these problems, how we do these cool things. But what's interesting is how we think about these problems really dictates how we try to solve them. Now when we all come in here, a lot of us are trying to buy a shoe. How do we know which shoe to buy? Well, we like certain colors, so maybe we go there. <laughs> right? That's true. I wear shoes that are not very practical at all right now. <laughs> Some Reebok high tops, but I like them. Right? Uh, we always do things for a little bit of fashion, but we talk to the running experts and they say, hey, what kind of runner are you? Okay, what are you trying to do? Are you a trail runner? Are you a road runner? Where are you trying to go? Are you a brand new runner or something else? You're like, hey, you want to know what? Why don't we get you on the treadmill over there and we'll watch you run for a little bit. And we're trying to glean some information on how you move as an athlete and then we're trying to fit that technology, that shoe, to best suit you. So then the question becomes, how do we put all these things together? Now a lot of us have different running shoes out there and we, we get them, we put them on and they help, right? They help a lot. We're all of a sudden able to handle a little bit more volume. We're all able to handle a little bit more distance, a little bit more speed, but a lot of times they don't help. Now, who here has orthotics in their shoes? A few of us, not too many. Uh, of you guys who did it, did you just wake up one morning and you're like, you know what? I want to visit my podiatrist and get some orthotics. First thing. No, it usually doesn't work that way, right? We have a problem. We're like, oh my gosh, I've been training all year. I have this marathon coming up and my knee is on fire. My IT band is on fire, right? So we go to the podiatrist and, we, and they fit us for this thing and they look at your foot and you're like, hey, every time you run, we're seeing the wobbles. The knee wobbles come out. There's some instability in the system. I know how to fix that, just the thing. We're going to stick something underneath your foot. You're good to go. For the short term, that's pretty successful and that works really well. But my question is, how do we get out of those orthotics? It's tricky. Sometimes we're in there all the time. I've been there too. It's like, hey, I have these. I need to fit them in every single shoe. And all of a sudden, they're everywhere. Now, when we're looking at these things, why do we have orthotics in the first place? Why are we in certain running shoes? Why did I get put into a high stability running shoe versus a low stability running shoe? Well, we're starting to look at some bigger, more intangible things. How you move as an athlete. Right? And I start to ask these questions. I get to travel around and talk to runners and triathletes and, and crossfitters on strength and conditioning and movement. And I always ask this question, why is running hard? Why do we do it? If it was easy, we wouldn't be sitting here learning about it. Right? There's some kind of challenge about it that we really like. As they said, we like that cool thing. We like that adventure. We like to challenge ourselves and push the limits. And when I ask this question, we always get different answers come out. Well, the time commitment is challenging. Just the running, I get beat up. I get all these micro fractures in my bones that we just learned about from Scott's talk on, on uh, technology. Um, we get this, you know, beat up sense. You know, why, why is it hard? Well, I've got to do these long runs and I have to do these speed runs and there's something about running technique in there too. Well, I could take this big, long, messy list and I could divide it roughly into two categories and I could look at the physiological aspects of running and I could look at the physical aspects of running. And what do I mean by the difference of those things? The physiological would be just all the different types of training workouts we do. Well, I have to train longer and build up my aerobic endurance to last. I need to do these longer extended hill repeats to build up my lactate threshold to improve my muscular endurance and my stamina. And we all know those reasons. But what we don't spend as much time on, per se, is the physical. When we have a problem in the physical, where you go to the podiatrist, we go to the running store, hey, I got something, I got a leak, you got to fix it, <laughs> right? How do I fix this leak? Well, the thing that I see, and this is where I have one foot in the endurance world and one foot in the strength and conditioning world, is that I see some similar patterns coming into play. And what happens is when I see that runner who has a knee problem, we're like, hey, well, let's have you come in here. I can't follow you out on the mountain. It's really hard for me to see what's going on, but let's slow things down and let's just see you move and we'll start with a squat because sitting and standing you're all sitting in chairs right now you're all gonna have to squat to sit up so squatting is one of those things we do every day well let's look at that see how that looks and we notice hey 
oh, maybe we see that little knee wobble in there. And uh, in the beginning, I give a little talk on injuries. And I can say, hey, we have different types of running injuries that we can face. Uh, we have the real acute ones. I slipped and fell, and uh, my knee caves in like crazy, and uh, I need surgery. I've torn some ligaments. I've torn some tendons. It's a mess. But that's not the only one. And the one that we deal with mostly is in the subacute world. Every day I go running. Every Wednesday I run up Mount Tam. I slam down, and my knee caves in a little bit every single time. And 10 years later, I wake up and I'm like, hey, I have no cartilage left in my knee. What happened? What happened? Right? So even if there are things that we can't feel right now, we don't know what's going on. So hey, we bring you into the gym. We slow things down. We take the mountain away. And we just watch you move. And we start to build some things up and notice some things. We're like, hey, you can't go down very deep in your squat. Well, maybe you're tight in your hips and your ankles because, hey, most of us sit at a desk all day. We're very tight. Okay, well, let's start you squatting. Let's get you moving. Let's improve that. Right? Hey, when you go fast, the wobbles come out a little bit more. We need to slow things down, build that up a little bit more. Hey, when we put a load on your back, all of a sudden you buckle through the midline, and all of a sudden I can't support anything here. And if I can't support anything here, I got no chance down here. So do you guys see where I'm getting with this? When we look at problems, it all depends on where we're starting from and how we frame it. When we look at things from the pure technological side, we wanna, we're looking almost from the bottom up. What's your foot strike doing? How does that work? Well, I need some things to help you with your foot. And is that technology good? Absolutely, right? We need it. We're not all running or walking around barefoot for a reason. But um, I want to look from the top down. What's going on up here? How does it affect us down there? And uh, how many of us think that heel striking is bad? Oh, people aren't sure. We got a few to think about that. Forefoot striking. Midfoot striking. Is running natural or do we have to learn? Tricky questions, right? How strong do we have to be as a runner to solve these things? How strong do we have to be to run a 5K versus run a marathon run, versus uh, run in the Western states? And uh, some of the things that I think is if we start to ask these questions, we start to come up with some very interesting answers. Hey, I run the Western states. And uh, I don't need to have very much arm strength, but I can't do two push-ups. And when I do push-ups, they're way out here. Is that a problem, yes or no? And it's like, well, is this a bad push-up? Maybe not necessarily, but when I stand like this, when a lot of us sit like this, this whole upper back rounds down, and all of a sudden the shoulders roll in, and when the shoulder rolls in, the elbows flare out. And then all of a sudden, it's a little bit harder to breathe because my, my lungs are collapsed a little bit. All of a sudden, my arm swing going from here is going across. And now I deal with all this excess rotation. How many of us get these little dirt scuffs on our calves and we come back from running? <laughs> How many of us see those photos where their knees are collapsed in this way? We see all these things, right? We have these little leaks. We're missing some things. Can technology help me out? Absolutely. But on my end, I want to work on the top down. Let's work on your push-ups a little bit. Let's get them a little bit better. Let's get you squatting. Let's open up your hips. Let's open up your ankles. That's going to be better when you're going uphill. Let's get you moving fast. Let's see where you start to break down as an athlete and improve it. And just one final thing. Um, I was talking to the ultra guys before I, uh, just earlier tonight, and I was asking about the history of the ultra shoes. And uh, I was like, well, hey, how did these come about? And he's like, well, the the owner is this very talented runner. He grew up doing all these different things. And his parents had this running shoe store. And uh, he would always tinker and play around. And one time, he wanted to mess around with, with the shoes. He wasn't happy, for whatever reason, with the shoe he had. We've all been there. Certain shoes feel better. Certain shoes, just they don't, they don't cut it for us. So he took his shoe, and he put it in the toaster oven. And he turned it on, and he melted the thing, and he started pulling the layers apart. And then from there, he could really see what this thing is from the outside in. I couldn't really see what's happening. But when I start to pull the thing apart, he could see all the layers that things were there. Hey, why do we have a thicker heel than not? Maybe I can mess around and see what happens if I take that away. And so all of a sudden, he started to tinker. He started to be creative. And all of a sudden, he's designed a new thing. He's made around a new company now that exists. And that's why we're here. So I think this creative side is really cool. And one of the things that I like to think that I'm doing in the strength and conditioning world is I'm taking you guys and I'm sticking you in the toaster oven. 
I'm pulling you apart, right? All these movements are going fast. We don't know what's going on. It's really hard to see. But we slow things down. We pull out all the pieces. And we ask ourselves these questions. Why is that raised heel there? Maybe it doesn't have to be. Maybe we can improve a better shoe. And as long as we continue to take those boxes away, think about what other people are doing in other sports, think about the questions of why does this have to be this way, maybe it could be a different way, we can continue to be creative and we can continue to push running forward, we can run further, we can run faster, we can run injury free. That's it guys, thanks for having me.